Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. Let's head back to the Firebase console and let's add an iOS app. So we'll click add app at the top and then we'll click iOS. And now we need the bundle ID so we can head over to our project. We can go to the info.p list on the iOS project and we can check the bundle identifier. And same thing if we have company name in there you can change that to something else. So I'll change mine to let's create series and then we'll copy that and we'll paste it into the Firebase console. And then the a nickname again is just a optional nickname for you. And then app store ID we'll get when we publish the app. So we're gonna leave that blank for now and we'll click register app. And then just like Android, we'll wanna download the config file. So let's go ahead and download Google services info.plist. The next step is to add the Firebase SDK. We can go ahead and do that in the NuGet packages. So let's head over to the project and add the NuGet package for analytics. So let's right click our iOS project and go to manage NuGet packages. And then we'll search for xamarin.firebase.ios and we'll get a list of available packages and we want the analytics one. And we're gonna change 640 to 621 and we'll click add package. And then our license acceptance window will appear and it'll show all of the dependencies that we'll be downloading as well as their licenses. So go ahead and click those licenses to view them. And once you've done that, click accept. And then we'll need to add some mTouch arguments. So let's right click our project and go to options. And I changed supported architectures for the iPhone simulator to the i386 plus the x8664. So then in the additional mTouch arguments, we're going to type dash dash registrar and then use a colon and just put the word static. And so this comes from Microsoft Docs based on linking errors. So we'll use that dash dash registrar colon static and let's press OK. And now that we have that, we can right click our project and we could bring in the Google services info P list. So go ahead and right click the project, go to add existing files and we're going to add that Google services info P list. And then we're going to right click Google services info P list. We're going to go to build action. And we're going to set that to bundle resource. And before we proceed any further, let's just go ahead and open up our Google services info P list and make sure that analytics is enabled. You might need to open this with Xcode, but you might be able to open it with visual studio. If it doesn't work with visual studio, just go ahead and right click and open with Xcode and then check in there and make sure that analytics is set to yes. And now that you have that done, you should be able to rebuild the app. So we'll right click iOS, we'll click rebuild. Some troubleshooting steps when you're trying to bring in xamarin.firebase. If you're unable to build or run while you're doing this, go ahead and remove the package and then go back to manage NuGet packages. Try to re-add the package, but decrease the version. Uh, some I had to go all the way down to uh, 4051 to get it to work. And then I just increased from there to finally get back up to 621. And then I could run from there. So if you have that problem, head all the way back to something like 4051 and then just upgrade from there to see if that fixes your problem. And with a successful build, Firebase needs access to the keychain on iOS. So let's go ahead and right click project and go to options. Then we'll navigate over to iOS bundle signing and make sure you have custom entitlements selected. And if you don't, just click the three dots and choose entitlements and press OK. And then make sure you have a prov provisioning profile selected. I have developer automatic, so then just automatic is my provisioning profile. And then click OK. And now the last thing we want to do is head over to our entitlements.plist. So go ahead and double click to open. And if you're not already on the entitlements tab, go ahead and select it so you have this nice UI that you could use. And then scroll down. And you're going to just simply click the plus sign on keychain. And then that will add keychain group for you. And once that's done, you can save and close. Now that we've got the NuGet package installed and we brought in our Google services info.plist and we checked to make sure analytics was enabled, let's go ahead and open up Firebase console. Now we can click next on step three. And now we'll want to head over to our app delegate and initialize Firebase. So we can go back to our project, open app delegate. And right before we return base.finish launching, let's go ahead and, and configure Firebase. And we can do that simply by using the Firebase namespace using core.app.configure. And that'll configure Firebase and start using analytics. So now we can run our app. With our app running, we can head back over to the Firebase console. So let's just go back to the Firebase console. And then we can go to analytics dashboard. And while we don't see any users in the last 30 minutes, we could click stream view. And stream view will show when we have usage in a little bit more reliable real time. And we can see that we have a 
user in the last 30 minutes, and so we could see that our iOS app is connected to Firebase. With the analytics set up and a connection to Firebase, we can go ahead and add the firebase.auth packages from NuGet. So let's open NuGet again and look for xamarin.firebase.ios again, and we'll search for auth. And once we find it, xamarin.firebase.ios.auth, let's go ahead and use the same version as we did before. So we'll use 621 and we'll click add package. We'll get another license acceptance window and we can click accept. And now with that added, we of course want to rebuild again. So we'll right click and click rebuild. And with a successful build, we'll go ahead and make a new folder in our iOS project and we'll call it services. And just like the Android project, I'll go ahead and expand to the Android project. We'll look in services and we see we have account service. Let's go ahead and make that in the iOS project as well. So we'll right click services, click new class, and we'll name this account service. I'm going to open the Android account service as well so we can use it as a reference. And our iOS account service is still going to implement the iAccount service from the shared project. We can use a quick fix to bring in that using statement. And then we can use another quick fix to implement interface. And now the same thing on get current pay rate async, we can just return task dot from result and we can just do 10 D here. Uh, and we will keep this kind of the mock data until we hook up to Firestore, which we have not yet done. But now we're gonna head into the login async method. Now the login async method, very similar to how we did it on Android, we're going to make a task completion source. We'll call the Firebase auth library and sign in with email and password async. And then we will just return the tcs.task. So let's jump back into our iOS and we will create that var tcs again equals new task completion source. And this will be of type bool. And then we can simply make a call to auth.default instance. And then we can use a quick fix to bring in firebase.auth. And then we can sign in with password async. So that is one of these. And we can see the method declaration takes in an email and a password. And then it returns a task, which we can then continue with. So we'll pass in username and password. And then we can use a dot continue with. And the same way, we can pass in a parameter to a Lambda function. And then we can call an action. So this will be on auth completed again. And we'll pass in the task and the TCS. And then we'll just simply return TCS.task. And now we need to use a quick fix on our on auth completed. So we can do that to generate the method. And then very much the same way, we'll go ahead and check to see if task dot is canceled or task dot is faulted. And if it is, we can just say something went wrong again. And we'll just go ahead and TCS dot set result with false and we'll return. Otherwise, if we've made it through this, then we can just say user is logged in and we will set result as true. And now we want to declare this as a dependency. So we will go above the namespace declaration and just say assembly dependency, which will use Xamarin forms. And then we can just say type of account service again, and this will use the current namespace that we're in. And then we can set a breakpoint to if task is canceled or faulted, just like we did last time, just to make sure this is going to register properly. And we can run the app. And with our app running, we can go ahead and log in with just the garbage that we used to use and press log in and we should hit the breakpoint and our task should be faulted. And we see that it is, it's faulted. So we'll just continue. And then we'll try to form this to look like some kind of email. So give it an at sign and a .com and press login. We should still get faulted, but our reason should be that the user doesn't exist. So there is no user record corresponding to this identifier. And that's a good thing. That means we're connected to Firebase. And so finally, if we try to log in with the test user that we created and we click sign in, we should get the same status we got from the Android project. And that is ran to completion, which should then come down to the users logged in and return true. So if we press continue, we'll head back to the time clock page. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.